Hey everybody, this is Russ Carson Jr., one of the genealogists here at Family Tree Nuts, and I'm in Greensboro, North Carolina at the uh, site of the Revolutionary War battle at Guilford Courthouse. I'm super excited about this uh, tour that we're getting ready to take because uh, of its, uh, the importance of the battle and the Southern Campaign of the Revolutionary War. And not only that, but I personally have two of my own great-grandfathers that fought at this battle. They were at the uh, second and third battle lines that uh, we'll take a look at here in a second. We're at the very first stop on the walking trail here, and uh, it's we're actually in between the first and second lines of the uh, American forces, and uh, we're going to go on each step and, and take a look at uh, what happened at each one of the lines over here. But you see down the road behind me, past the sign, about a quarter mile or so, is where the actual battle began with the first skirmishes of, uh, of Light Horse Harry Lee and uh, the hated Bannister Tarleton, Tarleton the uh, British uh, commander of the Dragoons. Um, the, the fighting was uh, started there. They were supposed to, Henry Lee, or Harry Lee's uh, men were supposed to be the, uh, the, the warning force for the troops that they were coming along the way. Um, the, uh, the, the, the prelude to the battle is, of course, and you can do a lot of research yourself. We're not gonna talk a ton about the uh, story of the battle, but the prelude of the battle is, is General Nathaniel Green and the American forces and, and General Lord Cornwallis was making a race to the Dan, as they called it, um, to make it back into Virginia where the, uh, they could link up with more supplies and possibly some reinforcements and some men. Um, but uh, they finally met at this spot right here uh, at uh, Guilford Courthouse and, uh, they, and Nathaniel Green said he was going to uh, give battle to General Cornwallis here. So we're at the uh, site of the, uh, uh, well, we're about 200 meters away from the site of the first skirmish, which is where the North Carolina militia was stationed. Um, Nathaniel Green didn't have a whole lot of hope in the militia. They, they were not battle tested. They hadn't been in any battles before and uh, he, he knew that he wasn't going to get much out of them. The purpose of them was to uh, form a line um, and uh, basically give one, two, or three volleys of fire, inflicting as much casualties as they could. They did one volley. Uh, the North Carolina militia did form up. They fired one volley into the advancing British and, uh, and, and retreated after that, uh, following back behind the second line. We're now at the uh, location of the uh, second American line that was uh, made up of Virginia militiamen. Um, these Virginia militiamen, some of them, this was their first battle, their first skirmish uh, of any kind of combat at all. And in others, it was uh, not their first, um, including my very own uh, great-grandfather, Enoch Russell. Enoch Russell had, uh, had already served a, a, a three-month stint with the Virginia militia and uh, was at the Battle of Camden down in South Carolina, and now he was here at this battle right here. Um, he was a, a part of the Virginia militia, and he was under a, uh, a Colonel William Campbell, uh, who's, uh, who's Scottish descent. He carried his grandfather's claymore in the battle, and they say he wielded it very, very well. Um, done some research and uh, actually three of my great-grandfathers served under William Campbell at one time or another. Alden Williamson served under him at the uh, Battle of Point Pleasant in West Virginia when, when uh, Colonel Campbell was a, was a captain. At this uh, stage of the battle, the uh, first line had uh, broken of the North Carolina militia. militia. They fell behind uh, the second line, behind the Virginia militia, and of course scattered, uh, which is what they were supposed to do. And uh, the the Virginia militia held as long as they could, um, fired a couple of volleys back and forth. Uh, one of the uh, British um, <clears throat> commanders was uh, wounded pretty bad right here. And uh, um, the, the basically, once the uh, British had made the advance, uh, the American troops did not have bayonets for their muskets. So uh, the British fixed bayonets and charged, and the British militia, er, and, and the Virginia militia, of course, fell back behind the third line. So. Some of the men uh, retreated all the way back home um, from there and were lost at the end of the battle. Um, but once again, inflicted heavy, heavy casualties on the British, which is going to prove a very important part of this battle right here. Um, so I wanted to show you Nathaniel Green's uh, statue up here. You see he is mounted on his horse there, listing uh, he, um, the battles that he was at. He was the commander of the Southern forces in the Revolutionary War. So he was at the Battle of Harlem Heights, Trenton, Princeton, Brandywine, Germantown, Monmouth. Uh, of course, his uh, born date series, born in uh, uh, Rhode Island and died in Georgia. Also at Guilford Courthouse, Hopkins Hill, 96, Utah Springs, 
Um, there's a quote from General George Washington behind me here too, it says, it is with pleasure which friendship alone is susceptible. Of that I congratulate you on this glorious end you have put to hostilities in the southern states, Washington. And I'll show you the other quote over here by Cornwallis, which I love. So I wanted to bring that one to you. From, from General Lord Cornwallis, Green is as dangerous as Washington. I never feel secure when he is encamped in his neighborhood. Cornwallis, thought that was pretty cool. Uh, anyway, this is the uh, location of the second line of the Americans and uh, we're gonna fall back just like they did to uh, line number three and pick back up in the video there. We are now at the uh, side of the third line on the battlefield um, and third and final line of the battlefield that was made up of uh, American regular troops. Uh, the Continental soldiers were here. Um, among the uh, soldiers that were at this line was my very own great-grandfather Josiah Markham. Josiah is not just a regular troop, he was a drummer. Um, played the drums, and if you know anything about this type of combat of the time period, um, they would uh, drum the commands uh, they, uh, for make ready, fire, aim, fire, and, uh, and other things. Uh, many people say that the musical talents in my family come all the way back to Josiah. So anyway, the, here at the third line, um, the British had made their advance. Um, there was extremely fierce fighting, and uh, some of the cannon were lost due to the American troops moving back. Um, they re, they re-attacked, and uh, um, William Washington uh, moved his cavalry out behind these troops. And there was extremely fierce fighting between the British in the middle and American troops on both sides. Um, Cornwallis saw that his troops were about to be destroyed and ordered that grape shot be fired into the lines of everybody. Yeah, killed many of his own troops. Um, very controversial call, but in reality, probably saved a whole lot of his. Uh, um, his own soldiers. Um, at that moment, the line broke and uh, the Americans began their retreat, giving up the uh, battleground to the British. Um, that was it for the battle. Um, the, uh, it was a British victory. However, in, re in the long run, it became extremely costly. 25% uh, of the troops, of the British troops, um, were, were, were a casualty and half of the officers uh, were a casualty. Um, it was very devastating on Cornwallis' army. Um, one of the, uh, 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 in the British Parliament said, another victory such as this will be an end of the British armory. Uh, so it's uh, a very costly uh, a battle for the British. Um, Cornwallis retreated down near Wilmington, North Carolina, and uh, just seven months later surrendered at Yorktown. Um, the, uh, the French, uh, as we know, uh, blockaded his escape out of Virginia. So thus ended the Revolutionary War and uh, gained us our freedom. So this is a very pivotal battle for Americans. We did lose this battle, but it was a strategic victory overall for the, Brit or for the Americans. Um, and uh, this will be our last stop here, but uh, very proud of all the sacrifices that were made here. Oh, wanted to bring one little thing, one little tidbit and quote from uh, uh, Lord Cornwallis. He said, never in his born days has he, had he seen such fighting and the Americans fought like demons. I thought that was really awesome and uh, of course reminded me of uh, my own Marines that had got the nickname Devil Dog at uh, Battle of Bella Wood later on in World War I. So anyway, wanted to bring you to this site of uh, the American Revolution, um, one that uh, many, many of our ancestors uh, fought at and were a part of, including my own. So remember, family tree nuts. Let our nuts find the nuts in your family tree.